What's up, everyone? Welcome back to a very brand new project. The first three-person podcast here on the Her Hoop Stats Network. I'm Tyler DeLuca, and today I am very proud to be hosting this very new podcast. Uh, a little bit about myself. I like women's basketball, and I like talking women's basketball, and I like talking women's basketball with other people. And that's what we're here to do today. Part of No Cap Space, where you can all the different articles and post game shows and everything. But I'm here with a new crew today. Jamie, if you want to hop in and introduce yourself, let's let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I'm Jamie Steyer Johnson. Um, you can find me on literally any platform as at Jay Styes, just like there. Um, so I've been around women's basketball my whole life. My mom has coached at Iowa State for over 20 years, uh, has coached in general for about 30. Um, and I am a broadcaster. I broadcast for Iowa State, a little bit for Drake. I do all sorts of primarily women's sports, but especially women's basketball has a special place near and dear to my heart. So super excited to get rolling with Her Hoop Stats with you guys. This is going to be such a blast. It is. Absolutely. Chelsea, round us out. Round us out. Yeah, um, I'm Chelsea Late. Again, you can find me most places at Chelsea Late, L-E-I-T-E. Um, Chelsea spelled the right way with an A, not a Y. Uh Um, And yeah, I know. I have an opinion on that. But um, yeah, I'm a freelance writer up in Toronto. I cover the Toronto Raptors for the NBA and just general WNBA right now because we're still waiting until 2026 to get our team Mm -hmm. up here, which is very exciting. Um, So, you know, if I talk about Canada a lot, that's why I'm just kind of a homer sometimes. But um, other than that, like to to write and this is my first time like actually hosting a podcast instead of being uh, just like a, a frequent or, you know, guest on other people. So I'm excited to get into it with you guys and um, shout out to my mom who's going to be listening every time uh, she will listen to every minute of every episode. So shout out Connie. Yes, hey, shout, out, shout out to Connie. Yeah. Shout out. Connie, we're about to be locked in every yeah, week, Connie. Every week. Every week, Connie, we locked in. Well, let's dive straight into it because we are back from the Olympic break in this WNBA season. And there have been a couple teams that have just been cooking over the course of just our short return. But now, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're well back into the, the, the swing of things in this WNBA season. Um, Jamie, if you want to start us off, what team has, has piqued your interest the most? What, what team has, has been the most on fire to you? I mean, I don't think it's really a question. And obviously I do have some bias as a Lynx fan, but to be, you know, the team coming back to go 7-0 from the Olympic break and the way that they had to do it. I'm sorry. At any point, if you're beating Las Vegas Mm. twice in three days, and then you go on less than 24 hours of rest to the, you know, dramatics that are playing against Indiana, especially mm-hmm. as a fellow Midwest team. Um, that was an unreal four day, three game stretch. Uh, and just the way they've been doing it has been so incredibly convincing. Uh, they've got so many contributions coming in off the bench. I've been really, really impressed with the way that Natisha Heideman has stepped her game up. Um, she's obviously always a significant threat, but has really seemed to find her footing since coming back from the break. Adding Maisha Hines Allen is is simply like unfair. Um, she has definitely not missed a step in adjusting to the link system. Um, Cheryl is someone who always has a vision, has had a vision, has been putting together the pieces for years now. And we're really seeing it come together. So that break was really good for those that had the break. For the number of people who played in the Olympics, thankfully Mm -hmm. they have come back without really missing much either. Didn't seem to, didn't see too much fatigue from the likes of if he's a Collier or Lynn Smith or Bridget Carlton. So, um, like I said, super biased in favor of my links, but also, uh, I think that the actual game and the numbers really back it up. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, it's so crazy how far we've come from, like, the preseason projections of the links and, and the you. question marks, you know, like, just with just the kind of the roster turning around and everything and just, just new pieces coming in. But I love that you mentioned Heinz Allen because it's very rare in the WNBA that you see a trade deadline move that can, like, genuinely impact and, and, and change the scales of playoff basketball. And we saw kind of two of those. Maybe it was a little bit earlier before the deadline, but like Heinz Allen at the deadline, that's 
in a in a league where there's limited flexibility, it's very rare we see moves like that. And the Lynx were able to go make one, and she's paying off already. And uh, it's very very possible that's a player that can win you a playoff game, like with the right contribution and everything. So I, I mean, heck of a move, and it's and it's showing. I think it's a seven game win streak now. Yeah. I think. Yes, yeah, seven yeah. straight off the break. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On fire. On fire. Chelsea, who you got? Um, I'm honestly interested in the Indiana Fever. They've been really mm-hmm. fun to watch over the past few games. I think the like benefit for them is that they didn't really have anybody. I think Christy Wallace was the only one who was in the yep. Olympic for them. And so that like chemistry they were able to build, a few of them went on vacation together. They've trained a lot and they're just so fun to watch right now. They just beat the Connecticut Sun, which is like huge in this league. Mm-hmm. The Sun are such a dominant team. They have great defense, so many superstars. And the fact that Indiana's just so much younger, like as a whole, beating that team is huge. And I think they're just kind of riding on that hype. I think that they obviously have their crowd behind them. They always have a sellout crowd, uh, you know, the Caitlin Clark effect or whatever we're going to call it. But um, yeah, it's just, and it's fun to see Aaliyah Boston really coming into her own, that partnership really forming up, you know, and now like Kelsey Mitchell's getting into it and Alyssa Smith, all these people. And I think they're just like, maybe we thought they were a couple years out of being a fun playoff team to get excited for, but they look like they're going to be maybe in that, like, maybe even like seven, six area. And I'm excited mm-hmm. to see who they get matched up with in the playoffs. Um, I mean, should they make it so far? They're not clinched yet but yeah they're just exciting and I think they're gonna give uh, a playoff like a higher seeded playoff team a run for their money in the first round and that'll be really exciting to watch yeah I feel like if you were to say like okay I give the Lynx as my answer for best team since the break but I definitely would say the Fever have benefited the most which I know is not Mm -hmm. like a new opinion this is something Mm -hmm. a lot of people have discussed I won't take credit for it but uh, I do think absolutely it's it's kind of absurd how much they've benefited from getting a little bit of time away from being able to really get to know each other off the court a little bit because you hit the ground running as soon as the W season starts, as soon yeah. as the draft happens. So uh, it's it's really impressive to see how much of a difference that short of a time can make. Yeah, 100%. I, I also think uh, it's, it's interesting that the, the difference in a, a bad Caitlin Clark game when especially with against a Connecticut Sun team where early in the season there was some troubles, or especially you know with DeJanae Carrington just on defense, just just locking down like in in the way that very few other players in this league can. And and Caitlin puts up it was nine nineteen five and five, and it felt like you know seven turnovers as well. So I don't want to leave that part out, but like that that felt like dang like that was like a a a, a quote unquote lesser game for Caitlin. And in comparison to past Connecticut Sun games that that they've had, feels insane. But I, one thing I do want to point out is, it's it's crazy to to your point of like how far the, the Fever have come. This didn't feel like certainly there was things from from the Sun perspective with this past game where it was like, you know, there's there's things you got to fix. But this this Fever team is playing at such a high level right now that it didn't even feel like a particularly bad loss for for the Sun. And and just to be able to say that about uh, a fever franchise that has had the struggles that it's had for the past X amount of years is, mm-hmm. is insane. And, and it's, I mean, truthfully everyone on this team right now, Lexi Holt has been incredible these past couple of games. Like, and, and I mean, I, I thought, um, Tammy Fag Benley, fantastic mm-hmm. off the bench, just like not even necessarily stuff in the stat sheet, but just the contribution and the impact it's, it's clicking on all cylinders right now. And the fever, I think you can make it, obviously the record isn't there, but just for like, current form i think there's an argument that could be made that the fever are playing like a top four team in the league right now just off current form not off record and everything obviously they've had their struggles but it's been it's been very interesting uh to see that development frankly just across the board for this team and how they've like the 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 Aaliyah boston and caitlin cart partnership how that's developed how kelsey mitchell has been playing since the olympic break and and i, I use that name to transition into this next one because I do want to know who who has been your guys' best performer since coming back from Olympic break. For me, Kelsey Mitchell's got a heck of an argument to to be that five straight twenty plus point games. But but Jamie, for you to to start off with, who who do you got? You know, I it's really hard because Kelsey has been unreal. Mm-hmm. Um, her stepping up in the way that she has is such a key 
to why the fever have been able to perform in the way in which they have you know i talked about with the links where they have these bench pieces coming in and really contributing and the fever are having a lot of that same sort of effect with as you mentioned lexi hull with temi fag benley like that mm -hmm. you need a good bench to Certainly. do well in the wnba in general with short turnarounds as well as to make deep playoff runs mm -hmm. i will get into that on a different day but <laughs> um Kelsey Mitchell has been terrific. Uh, if I'm going with, you know, the same sort of theme, though, of the Lynx being the best team since coming back, you got to look at Nafisa Collier's Absolutely. play. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's so fun. It's just so fun to watch the Lynx play. And Nafisa Collier is just a baffling player because she's a little bit undersized for the position she plays. She doesn't really look all that imposing in stature or in strength, and yet she goes in and she just is so crafty. She will throw up shots that look like they have absolutely no chance at going in. You know, people say that about the deep threes and things like that. Look at the shots that Nafisa Collier hits on a regular basis, like mm. her angles falling away over taller defenders. It's crazy. And I feel like what she's really been able to do this year is elevate not just her own game, but the way in which she plays with the rest of her team. Um, she's sitting at just over four assists per 40 minutes, which is in the top third, close to the top third of the league. But for someone who is playing at about the four position mm -hmm. um, and for someone who also has... 24 points per 40 like you need to be a threat to pass and so um and that's not even getting into the way that she's been rebounding which again yeah. is is so absurd for being someone who's you know a little over six foot so mm -hmm. i i love her game um and it's just so impressive to me the way that she's elevated and to think that she is not very far removed from a maternity leave. That's like, just so crazy. <laughs> it's it's insane. And, and, you know, she had a kid a little bit younger than some of the players that we've seen in this league mm -hmm. go for maternity and come back. But even so, mm -hmm. it's it's frankly just incredible to watch. You realize how good you have to be playing for people to be like, are we sure Asia Wilson is the MVP? <laughs> you realize how good, like, like with the way Asia's playing, like, for people to even be able to ask that question and not be looked at like they're crazy, you realize how good you have to be playing? Yeah, to and have, like, a Nafisa legitimate Collier's argument. Doing. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, there is a, like, if there there is a case to be made as to why Nafisa Collier could get some votes. And yeah. with the way Asia's playing, that's insane. It's like the yeah. level that you have to be doing that at and team success to be doing that at. Chelsea, what about you? Who you got? Well, literally perfect segue because I was going to say Asia Wilson. Even though the um, the Aces, sorry, I'm thinking about the Lynx mm -hmm. still, but even though the Aces haven't won as many games as they probably have wanted to, I mean, they look like a very different team than they did last season, but Asia mm -hmm. Wilson is playing the best basketball of her life, but also maybe like the best basketball we've ever seen, like ever. Yeah. And is on track to have a career, not only a career season for herself, but like a literal record-breaking season in the league. I think she's averaging more points than Diana Taurasi did in like 2006, I think is the current record of, you know, best average points per game in league history. And the fact that like, it's so frustrating to think that she's having like four, she scored 42 points the other day against the Dallas Wings. And it was like, I think the aces in total maybe scored like 80 something points and it was literally like she scored 42 of those mm -hmm. and then they lost. And that's frustrating because when the player's having that good of a game and then Nafisa Collier is coming up and, and having the games that she's having and people mm -hmm. are having a question now of, you know, should Nafisa get the edge because her team is better or should Asia still have, you know, the MVP race because she's playing that well, but even though her team is a lower seed, it's, it's, you know, you have to think about what these awards mean and why we're voting and what makes an MVP, I guess. But Asia Wilson is truly just amazing. You know, every single person with how good she's playing. And when you watch her and see how much she can dominate a game and uh, how much impact she has, it's incredible. And I just wish that the aces were able to capitalize on that a little bit better because, you know, for them to be, for her to be playing in her best form, while being a two-time champion, while having an MVP season, and they're still like I think the fifth seed right now. It's it's definitely 
a little frustrating when you're watching it. Yeah, I'll be very interested in seeing how hindsight looks at the fact that the Aces had the amount of Olympians that they did. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, just, I mean, from the complete opposite spectrum of what we were talking about with the Fever. You know, like they, mm -hmm. they just have Christy Wallace going for the Olympic break, but, you you know, your your core players are, are all staying home and getting rest and building and everything. And mm -hmm. it's not like the Aces weren't struggling already, you know, prior to the Olympic break, you know, in, in certain ways. So, but I, I mean, I completely agree, though, with the way that Asia Wilson – it's ridiculous. And I, it's, I will it's say, I feel like it says something about, like, the standard to which Asia has, like, elevated herself that she wasn't the first person that we mentioned, too. Like, yeah. to me, it's just, like, almost a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that, Chelsea, you bring it up, and obviously you you highlight, I mean, she has been unreal since coming back, capped off by most recently that 42-point game. And so that's just, like, what she's been doing all season mm -hmm. and that she did go and she did contribute. She did carry team USA in a lot of situations and still came back and was able to play even better with now. I mean, at times even less help from the rest of the team mm -hmm. um, is crazy, but yeah, that's a great point because she has not really missed a step at any point in this season putting together like a, a complete hall of fame like video game numbers we'll never <laughs> see again except maybe from her kind of season yeah it's what well, my, my favorite part about asia wilson reaching this level is that this has been a build this has been a uh from over her entire career has been building to this season in the sense yeah. where she has just gotten better every single year and now it's it's, it's there's no debate about who the best player in the world is now. And like, I mean, even if you go like back to even last season, like obviously not winning the MVP last season, which would have had my vote, but <laughs> alas, I mean, we won't get back into that. But like, uh, but like, obviously like, you know, that there was some level of debate, not anymore. Now, yeah. like MVP, you know, is, is it, awards get interesting because ever, there's not technical qualifications for most awards. Uh, well, really any awards, like it's kind of just a very broad definition for what, uh, a most valuable or most improved is. But mm -hmm. when it comes to just the day-to-day -day basis of the WNBA and of the world of women's basketball, nobody's doing it better than, than Asia Wilson right now. And uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how, how down the stretch that, that goes, but down the stretch also uh, when speaking of kind of races towards the finish line, uh, this eight seed is, is very interesting to me because it feels like at times the sky and the dream both just don't, won it <laughs> like uh and 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 watching them um struggle in completely different ways um but I, i'm i'm interested in, in who you guys think currently uh if you were to pick who is going to be in that eight seed when it comes to to playoff time who who do you have jamie you can you can bat lead off for us you know it really is tough because like you said like there's been times where both of these teams look terrific like mm -hmm. they'd be getting the same kind of discussion we just had about the fever about how they can absolutely give a higher seeded team a run there in the postseason and then there will be times where it just falls really really flat mm -hmm. and there's not really a lot of rhyme or reason to it sometimes. Um, I will say I do think that at a certain point, experience does help. Mm -hmm. And so down the stretch here, I do think that you can have an edge from the dream in that they have more of their core who have been there before have sure. been around the league for a little bit longer especially the way that tina charles has come been on playing. come on 35 I mean, the comeback has been one of my favorite uh, stories of this season is, has as been, you know. as a as a post fanatic mm -hmm. um i love it you go out there you are maybe the first center to ever have a triple double with assists, like, that's crazy. You've mm -hmm. had both Lisa Leslie and Varga Didek both did it with blocks. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think you could truly call Candace Parker a setter. So, yeah. like, 
for yeah, sure. Yeah, she doing whatever she wanted out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you could, you could say maybe yeah. a post player. Like yeah. you could call yeah, Suki yeah. a post player, but like you're not going to call her a center. So like, that's crazy. Um, yeah. And so that can elevate their play so much. And then you have the caliber of players of you know Ryan Howard, Alicia Gray. Jordan Kidd, they, there's so many different pieces that just for whatever reason haven't all clicked at the same point this mm-hmm. year. Uh, but you see flashes of it. You know that there are players who have been around this league for a while now who kind of get it. And so for the Sky, I think that their highs are higher, but the lows get a little bit lower when you are relying really heavily on a rookie and a couple rookies, I should say. And then a player who is coming back into the league after a season of being out has never Mm -hmm. shouldered this kind of load in Kennedy Carter. So um, I do think that having that experience at the core, I would I would lean Atlanta, but I I honestly might be more scared to see the sky in the playoffs. Yeah, I think that's definitely valid. And and Jamie, I'm going to pick up where you left off when it comes to being a post fanatic real quick, because I think the sky needs to be leaning on a certain rookie more. Because the fact that Camila Cardoso only had four shot attempts in that last game, I ugh, don't like it. Because when you talk about the, the low floor uh, that, that the Sky can have, I think if you play – it's not saying you got to play through Camila for all 40. Nothing like that. But four shot attempts? That's – come on. Because I think Camila is a player that if you – especially because she led the team in assists as well. So obviously the passing is there. The re- she gets a double double with four shot attempts. Like it's it's all there, and I, I just I don't feel like they play through her enough. And I think if they did increase that, like I said, not all forty minutes, but just I think you could have some possessions where you're just like, all right, let's get the ball to Camilla in the post, and we'll figure it out from there. Whether it's her passing, her scoring, whatever. Like you, I, you, I feel like you can do that more than they have, and I think that would raise their floor so much. Even if you're just giving her. X amount of possessions for the for the game where you want to emphasize her, and I haven't we haven't really seen that, and and that's that's one of my bigger worries. And for the dream, like I just I need to see some late game execution at some point, and 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 that's that's what's been what's been what's been killing me. But but Chelsea, what 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 are you what are your take here? What what, what you got? I have a take in a second, but I just want to take a second to think to talk like just briefly about that play that Noel Quinn drew up like at mm-hmm. the end of that last night's game. Well. Today's Thursday for us, but at the end of Wednesday night's game, to get Drew Lloyd the ball, to be able to score and win that game against the Dream, like, that was Mm -hmm. so beautiful. And, I mean, I'm not, like, the biggest coach's mind, and Jamie has more of that experience, but, like, just seeing how that happened and how, like, sometimes I just look at plays and I'm like, whoa, like, that was crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, we all know Drew Lloyd can make that shot, but, like, that was was wild. That was nice. So props yeah. to Noel Quinn, assistant coach for the Canadian national basketball team. Shout out to her. Maybe um, needs to be a head coach. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah, maybe. Um, I would say yes. I love it. Yeah. I love her. So anyway, but um, anyway, my team that I think is going to sneak up and get that eighth seed, I'm just going to throw this out there as like a different answer, is the Dallas Wings. Because. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Okay. All right. They just got Satu Sabali back after the Olympics. She has been playing so well, like, I think Mm -hmm. averaging, like, over 20 points in the five games that she's played. The Wings just won against the Aces, which is huge. And they also have three games against the three teams above them coming up in the next, like, two weeks. Mm -hmm. So they play the Atlanta Dream, the Washington Mystics, and uh, the Sky. And I think they play the Indiana Fever twice. So, like, if they're able to get a couple wins and be able to start climbing and, you know, some of these other teams, like Atlanta, you know, can't close out games or these you know certain other things happen i think they might be able to sneak in on a few technicalities and arike is playing so well satu now that they're back together it's been so rare for us to see these two like healthy together and i think like when they're healthy together this team is so much better than their record suggests and i mean when you think back at their struggles i mean i think they only went into the olympics having won six games but like that was without sabali so like you bring her back Mm -hmm. And, like, just think about where this team could go. And I know Tierra McCowan's been playing well. They have a few young players as well. So I think if anybody's going to, like, sneak up, if Atlanta and Chicago kind of drop the ball a little bit, they could just shoot up and, you know, accidentally get that that eight seed. Yeah, that's they're, they're currently three games back of Chicago right now. So it's not impossible. 
They gotta no. get it to, gotta get it together quick. We gotta get it together. We're running right? out of time. Yeah, yeah they're running out of time. From the teams but, ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, they, but they need help. Certainly, like, like I don't think it's any. I mean, we saw last season what what this team can can do, especially in, and that was just LT's first season. And I mean, they just have been very unlucky, frankly, with with the injuries. Yeah. But like, because I think if they're healthy, they they're probably in the playoffs right now already, mm-hmm. frankly. Um, with with Satu and Arike and obviously the amount of size that they have and everything, but it's gonna be very interesting to yeah. see how this 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 race goes to the eight scene and how these other teams and players that we mentioned can hold up this form and hopefully not peak too early. That's that's the fear you gotta be you gotta be worried about. But as we go into the deep end of this season and postseason play, it'll be very exciting to see how it all goes and we will be here to talk about it. For Tyler, Chelsea, and Jamie, we're signing out. We'll see you next time.